Hey guys, it's Spaces Sins, and we are back with more My Next Life as a Villainous, continuing Alan's route, just about to get into our conclave meeting here in our brain. Um, and... I did scroll up in the guide because usually, like, you have to save at these points or whatever. They're save points. Um, and we do. But I already saved from, like, before loading the game. So I saved at the end of the last part. I was like, let me, like, scroll up a little. And I'm like, okay, I see the save file. I don't know what the choices are. But I was like, let me let me just, um, I might see the choice, but it's fine. But so, perfect. This is going to be our first save point. Let us begin our strategy meeting. First, let's consider how many people can fight. I assume that would be Jordo, Alan, and Nickel. As long as I have a sword, I can fight! But there should be only two guards. Even if we were to steal it, we would only obtain two swords. And besides, Jordo and Alan are great swordsmen, so they'd be the ones to wield the swords. Since the royal family are prohibited from using magic, the only one who can is Nickel. I have sneeze. Hold on. What about Mary and Sophia? Mary can use water magic and Sophia can use wind magic. But to make a lady fight... She has a point. Sophia did say that her magic is weaker than Nichols. It may be risky to hope she can fight. And Maria has light magic. It's used for healing, not attacking. And my earth bump is useless as there's no soil on the ship. What'll we do? Fearless Katarina is just so positive about it. But Mary's magic skills are great, and her grades are excellent. If we depend on her, maybe this could work. Right? Mary's very resourceful. Maybe we could get by with her. But Liliana, who had water magic, struggled against the pirates. It may be best to just avoid any kind of battle. Then why don't we negotiate with the pirates? Seems like they attacked us for some reason. Why don't we offer to find the something? Hmm, why don't we vote? One vote to rely on Mary, one vote to negotiate with the pirates. I feel like pirates is the right one here, right? Because, like, why would we rely on Mary? It's, that's, like, taking away from Alan and negotiating with the pirates, you know, is more uni universal, you know? Be sure to save before the votation, which I've already done. Yeah, because you can't go here. Yep. Yep, one vote to negotiate with the pirates. Then are we all in favor of trying to negotiate with the pirates? Aye! <laughs> Phew! I've gathered my thoughts! I'll let everyone know my plan, but I find that everyone is discussing amongst one another and I couldn't chime in. I see Alan standing next to me, so I try poking him. Prince Alan, is there no way of negotiating with them? What? Negotiate? I mean, talking to Silva yesterday, he did seem he didn't seem to be a bad person. Isn't there a way to negotiate with him? Well, you may have a point, but what do you plan on negotiating with him? Uh, what do you plan on negotiating with him? For example, why don't we offer to help Silva look for what he's searching for? In return, he can let us walk about free. <laughs> Against pirates? That's a pretty ballsy idea. It was really weird seeing Silva there for a second. I'm like, oh, he snuck in while we weren't looking. We suddenly hear a voice from behind and turn around to find Silva standing there. Hey, how's your secret meeting going? <laughs> I love him. There's Silva! As soon as I see his face, I remember what I saw in my dreams. I can't wait to see the hot pirate! He's not on the cover, but he's in the magazine. I'm sure he's a secret character. The Demon of the Fog. Silva's the captain of the Weiss Pirates, whom have attacked the Vinculum. If I compare him to what Atsu mentioned along with the picture in the magazine... He may actually be the secret character on the fan disc. You sure are rude for entering without knocking. Well, I 
am a pirate after all. But does that make a rich boy like you uncomfortable? How long were you eavesdropping on us for? And don't worry, just from you helping look for what we're looking for. Sorry to say we're not looking for anything, so we can't go with that. Oh, really? Then why did you attack this ship? Isn't it obvious? It's a rare ship and we're after nobles like you. See, I don't feel like that's the truth, though. The moment Silva says that, Jordo, Alan, and Nickel stand in front of the women, shielding us from him. Silva cackles. <laughs> don't worry about it. You guys are very important hostages to be ransomed for. But we won't hurt you. Ah, uh, but uh, there are plenty of people, and the ones who hold magic. It may be more money to just sell you off, huh? See, the weird thing is he's saying all of this, but, like, this is exactly what um, Ryle's plan was. But it's like, I don't think that that's Silva's at all. Like, obviously, like, just in case you did Alan's route first, they can't be like, you know, whatever. Like, you've still got to be sus of them. But we know that that was Ryle's plan. And I'm wondering if Silva's, like, throwing that out there. Like, oh, we're going to ransom you. We could probably sell you just to see if anyone's like, what? Who would do that? Like, looking sus. You know what I mean? Reading people. Be like, yeah, you don't have anything to do with it. He probably knows we don't, but... Sell us off. I thought we heard that most of the Sorcier nobles can only use a little bit of magic. A ransom sounds like a better business. But even then, the lame ones born in other kingdoms with weak magical powers could still, still sell for a lot. Either option ain't bad. What? There are people who can do magic in other kingdoms? Katarina... That isn't the part you should be reacting to. But I never knew. Sorcier blood got mixed with bloodlines in other countries, causing children to awaken with some magic powers, though I heard it was weak. That's right. And, and a noble from Sorcier, which is known as the Magic Kingdom, the price would go even higher. We're the Magic Kingdom? You better be careful with your wording. You're gonna get sued by Disney. Like, whoa, they said Magic Kingdom. It's not capitalized. I don't think it can. <laughs> I don't think you can just steal those two words, but like, like seriously, what do you hear when you hear, you're the Magic Kingdom? What? Shh. Shh. Disney's gonna be all up in this shit, and I'm gonna get sued by them, which is bizarre. Do you mean there's no way that would be allowed? It's forbidden by law! Yeah, apparently most kingdoms have such laws. But in reality, Sorcier is the only kingdom that follows it. And there are plenty of people out there who want individuals with unique abilities. Silva's tone sounds a little evil. His eyes glow violet as he speaks. Apologies. I got a bit too excited. But see, it's funny because he's acting kind of evil in this one, but I don't really think he is at all, so interesting. Silva snaps out of it and covers his violet eye with his hand. He moves his hand away and his eye turns back to normal. Did he say he got excited? Then does that mean his eyes change when... Wait, that reminds me. Silva didn't seem too fond of the black market. Is that what he meant? Then when he just said maybe... What he just said may be the truth. There must be a place where people really are bought and sold outside of Sorcier. That's horrible. Human trade should be forbidden by law. Like he said, it is, but most people ignore it. Does that mean we'll really be sold? Along with the ship? No, I don't want that. It's funny because, like, I've... That's exactly what Ryle was trying to do. I just find it weird that Silva's kind of hinting at it like that. But I guess, to be fair... If you're Silva and you're save napping everyone, you're not going to tell everyone, oh no, we're pirates, don't worry guys, we're just trying to help you because someone here is trying to sell you and we're just trying to protect you. No one's going to believe you. So if you want to keep everyone in line, you're like, hey, maybe I'll sell you. Who knows? Feeling like selling some nobles on the black market. Might change my mind later. You know what I mean? And they're going to be like, ah! And then, like, keep their mouths shut, keep quiet, stay safe, like... And he has no intention of doing it, but it's a fear to keep people in line so that he doesn't have to deal with us and our shenanigans running around doing crazy shit. Like, will you just sit fucking still? Goddamn. You know what I mean? 
He's trying to strike fear into us so we behave, but he doesn't know us. That's going to do the opposite. So, The Vinculum is a special ship. There's only one in the world. If we consider the value of that, as he suggests, that is a lot of money. We turn pale as we realize what their purpose is, and Alan puts his hand on my shoulder. Hey, I'm not satisfied with that explanation. Also, here's the thing about the vinculum, right? Like, oh, it's a valuable ship. Yeah, and then you're going to sell it to someone, but then that person has got a stolen ship. And like, okay, I know theoretically it's like stealing a car and then somebody buy, and you scratch off the VIN numbers and you do some shit. But there's like a black market for that kind of shit. You know what I mean? But like, is there like a black market ship dealer that's going to be able to sell this ship and someone's not going to see it and go, huh? Interesting. You have a ship exactly like that vinculum ship that like, quote unquote, sunk? Interesting. I thought there was only one in the world, but like, <laughs> you got a second one. Cool. You know what I mean? Like, this is a pretty unique fucking ship to try to sell. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have the first, like, fucking spaceship, like a round UFO ship, right? We have the first one, and someone takes it and sells it on the black market, and some other country has one when, oh, that one got destroyed. And you're like, well, weird that you have one that looks exactly like our, like, the no amount of paint on this motherfucking ship is going to change, like, is it you're going to sell it for the parts and shit? And, like, whatever, I guess, you're going to deconstruct it? Like, how's that going to work? I shouldn't be thinking of the logic behind it. But, like, you can't just, like sell a giant ship like this and think no one else is ever going to see it again and notice. I mean, I guess if you sell it, like if you think about it, like we're in one area of the world, you sell it to somebody else completely different and it's only going around over there. We might never know, you know, it doesn't seem like as much of a global economy going on in this world as we have. So might be easier, but I'm just saying it's not like you're going to sell it to Quid and Quid's going to be like, ha, 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 I got this awesome ship, and then someone's going to be like, hey, wait. You know what I mean? It's a pretty unique ship. So, like, you got to have a plan if you're going to buy a pretty unique ship to try to keep it under the radar. Like, nobody buys stolen artwork. Like, somebody breaks and steals the Mona Lisa, and then you buy it so that you can hang it in your fucking foyer, and people walk in, yeah, no, it's the Mona Lisa. Isn't it weird that that one got stolen? This is a different one. You know what I mean? You have, like, underground rooms and shit for that. You don't just, like, put it on your fucking wall in your bathroom, you know, where everyone can see it. So, like, a ship like this, you gotta have some fucking plan. What's your plan? Curious. Like, hold on. Anyway, that's not the point. We're not supposed to think about the logic or lack thereof behind it, but maybe they're gonna sell it for parts. To be fair, sometimes when they're stealing cars, they're chopping it up because, like, parts are more are worth more than the car itself, so. Anyway. Huh? If you're after the ship and the nobles of Sorcier, then why attack now? The timing doesn't make sense. I mean, the ship was intended for the upper class. As soon as this demonstration trip had ended, it would have gone into service. The ship would have no choice but to pass the Blanc Sea to get into Quid. You could have attacked then, and you would have had way more people on board. Oh, he has a point there. Alan was right. If they had waited, eventually ships would have entered the Blanc Sea. It doesn't explain why they chose to attack now. I mean, we know why, but... <laughs> well, a normal pirate would think like that. But the ones being hunted aren't dumb either. They'll learn. Since the Blanc Sea is our turf, every ship is on high alert. We've failed before. If one fails to catch his prey, it's only natural to change the way he hunts. He has a point there, too. I like how he's got an answer for everything and not like, oh! Like, some smart person's gonna try to figure out the flaw of my logic. He's totally got an answer for it. We'll end this meaningless conversation for now. I have business with you two. Come with me. What? Me and... Me too. What do you want with Katarina? He's like, you can take my damn brother. I don't care. Wow. No mention of your twin brother, huh? Hold on. Now I have like a dry spot in my throat that's bugging me. Alan's my little brother. He can handle things on his own. What? But Katarina... I also can't just stand back and let you take Katarina. You're right! Can't you take me instead? 
No, I'll go. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> it's not from doing the voice. It's just like, you ever get like a dry spot in the back of your throat and you just feel like you're going to die? It's just like a dry, like it's not a soup, like. It's god awful when it's just that one spot. It's just one spot in your throat and it's dry. And you're like, oh god, it hurts so bad. Oh my god, it's like your entire throat's dry and it's just this tiny little spot. It's like that, but it's a larger spot on my throat and it's not quite as dry as that normal dry spot. But it's just, it's still making me like cough. And I don't have, and I don't have a drink right now with me. But like, good lord, holy shit. I've been obviously been trying to mute when I cough. I did not mean to cough in your ear. It just came out of nowhere. It just hit me. Ugh. Look how they worried they are over you. <laughs> you sure were raised in a box. And don't worry, I won't hurt her. I just need to borrow them for a bit. No others would do. Only they would know. You're worried about that Liliana girl, right? Oh, does this have to do with Liliana? If you're gonna help, then I'll let you see her. But only you two. The others will have to wait here. If you remain locked in this room... You will get no information. What do you say, Prince Alan? Katerina? Want to come with me? Hell yeah, I do. Well, got it. I'll go. I'm worried about Lady Liliana's safety. Yeah, that's exactly the ruse I was like. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go. I'm wor I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely worried about her safety. It's not because Pot Pirate is asking me to go with him and I will go anywhere you ask. Even though Alan did pin me to a sofa and that was 120% hot, but... Still, pirate. Come on, Alan. It'll be fun. I thought Katarina would say that. Very well. It's not like we have any other options right now. You have a point. What? No! Mary, Sophia, Maria, don't look so worried. I'll be fine. We'll figure it out. You're like, I'm going with Alan. He'll take care of me. Is it me? How can you stay so positive through all of this? Hmm. It's just a hunch, but... But if I say that, everyone's gonna make a comment on it, so I'll stay quiet. Fine. It's not like we have any other options. I'll comply. It's set, then. Come with me. Alan, take care of Katarina. Please, don't expose her to any danger. Alan's like, she exposes herself to danger. I'm the one that usually tries to stop her. Of course. Alan nods with a stiff expression. And this is how Alan and I, taken by the pirates, leave the room for the first time since yesterday. I do like how they wrote this. It, like, they threw in Liliana here, and I was like, why? But it makes, but now it's like, oh, but it does give us a convenient reason for Silva to be like, oh, hey, just you two, because you met that Liliana chick. No one else knows her. You two come with me. Like, you know... Jordo with obvious, okay, we got stuck with the pirates, and he's like, nope, you stay with me, you're my fiancé type of a thing, makes sense. You know, Jordo taking control of things and being with us and keeping us with him, we're his fiancé. Sure, easy. Like, with Keith, it's like, well, he's your brother, and then you get sick, so then you end up in the infirmary, and then you stay together, you know, whatever, okay. Like, and now this is like, okay, this is like, I like how they're kind of like, Writing in ways of, like, how do we get her to stay with her love interest and not just the group? You know? Still and a few pirates surround us as we walk down the hall. The vinculum's mysteriously quiet. The other nobles must have been locked away. It appears they've completely seized the ship. Hey. Oh, I have to yawn. <sighs> That's a train wreck. Looks like it. I hope everyone is safe. If they're just trapped like we are, I would say they're safe for now. If the pirate's goal really is to sell us, this would be really bad. If they want a ransom, then we could go home alive. But we would need to pay them money. Oh no, that means for our family it would be both Keith and myself. I can see Father trying to figure something out, but I don't know if Mother would. <laughs> Goes back to her mother's kind of a bitch. What if Mother says something like, Let's pay for Keith and give up our hopeless daughter. She probably would. Uh, I will be able to see Anne, Tom, the gardener, or the head maid anymore. I don't want that. And Katarina, 
I bet you anything you're thinking something odd. As I'm groaning to myself, I feel Alan's hand grab my head. He shakes and throws my head as he lets go. <laughs> what are you doing, Prince Alan? Ugh, Mary and Maria did my hair. You get messed up. Confused, I look up and Alan looks a little troubled. I'm stopping you from going down some weird thought process. I bet you're stressing out about how you can't afford your ransom. What? How did you know? I've known you a long time. Well, that may be true, but Alan is still as blunt as ever. I can't believe he can read my thoughts. Heath is usually the one who calls me out at times like these, but for Alan to do so... Am I that obvious? Just don't put your mind in a weird place, okay? Focus on protecting yourself. Who knows what's gonna happen? Alan looks toward the pirates as he mutters that to me. Alan's right. If we anger the pirates, we may end up like Ryle. Thank you. Don't worry. Don't worry! Uh, he's gonna worry, so I feel like we should be like, thanks. Just thank him. Don't worry is a bad choice. Don't worry! That's exactly why I said that, because I do worry! I can see how this goes. Yeah, thank you. I am so nailing the right answers for Alan. Okay, I'm just saying. So if I were in this Atome world, I would absolutely be able to romance the shit out of Alan. So easy. But like, Rosie and the Hot Pirate. Can I just have a man harem? Thank you for worrying about me, Prince Alan. Hmm. <laughs> I thank him, but Ellen just sighs and turns away. But I'm blushing. Because we've known each other for so long, I can tell he's hiding the fact that he's blushing right now. Ellen never wants to show his true feelings. If I were to describe his personality in a term from my past life, he's definitely a Sundere. I wonder what kind of cooperation Silva wants from us. He said it was related to Liliana. Here we are. Just as I'm thinking to myself, Silva and the others suddenly stop in front of a room. Do I hear... water? Hmm, what could it be? A Liliana fighting like fuck. Well, go in and find out. She's made a pool in there. Look at how fancy her motherfucking room is. Our room's not that nice. We got like 12 people in our room. We enter the room and see Liliana standing in the center of it. and you'll regret it! Take me to Marquis Ryle, now! Hey, what are we gonna do about this? She's out of control. Lilian is at the center of the room, using her water magic to prevent the pirates from approaching her. She's feisty. The pirates stand around, not knowing what to do. Here's the thing, most of the nobles have water, have magic, not water magic, sorry, I was just gonna say magic. Have magic, and none of them used it. This bitch is over here like, ping, 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 like throw it, like fucking fling it all of her water magic at everybody till she passes out, and then she's gonna do it again. She is feisty. Where the fuck is the fight in every other noble that has magic? Are we like the only little group? Like, why is nobody else? Like, I mean, theoretically, we probably should have asked this question a long time ago. Anyway, the pirates stand around, not knowing what to do. She's been like this all day. We're running out of options. Who would have thought that we'd find Liliana Werder here? Her name wasn't on the guest list, so this is unexpected. Okay, so it's her brother or her dad? Oh, that's right. She mentioned she'd snuck it. Hey, wait a second. Werder? Yeah, one of the most prestigious magic families, even among the Sorcier nobles. And Liliana Werder is famous in her own way. Oh, he probably, it's probably like, oh, he doesn't have kids, though. Like, whatever, it's probably like his sister or something, and he probably hates her. But she didn't say, like, my lo my loved one. I swear the way she phrased it sounded like she was after a man. Maybe she did say loved one. But I swear the way it was phrased, maybe they mistyped it, or I misread it. Because it made it sound like, I came in here looking for my love. And we're like, oh, she's in love with someone and she snuck on the ship. No, this is obviously like her brother or some shit. Oh, well, that's true. Didn't 
Did Ryle mention having like a younger sister or whatever that actually had magic and he was worthless and useless because he has none type of a thing? So he probably hates her. And she loves him. Interesting. Had I known, I would have thought of other ways. Hey, that isn't the problem here. Did you just say Werder? Huh? I did. Werder. Oh. Isn't Ryle Marquis Werder? So wait, Liliana wasn't stalking Ryle. I see. She's Liliana Werder. To Marquis Werder, she's the apple of his eye. Wait, is that supposed to be his wife then? What? So she's Marquis Ryle's wife? I think so. I don't think I've met her before. I thought she was ill. She also looks like 12. Okay, but she looks like... He looks like a normal adult man and she looks like our age. Like, dude, sir? Your wife should have actually looked a little bit older than us. Like, I'm just saying... She looks like a 17 or 18 year old girl. Sir? That's inappropriate. I don't remember him mentioning... I thought he said his wife was really sick all the time or something. Didn't he? Okay, so when she did say you know, someone she loves, we were like, okay, it's a man she's into. Okay, I wasn't wrong then! But I was like thinking, I'm like, oh, she's so young. I thought she was just in love with someone, not... That's his wife. Good, sir, Rob in the cradle. Sir, she's young enough to be your daughter. I don't know how old he's supposed to be, but like... you. Okay, here's the thing. Sometimes when they draw characters, you're like... They're like, oh, they're 22. And you're like, why do they look 30? And not in the anime sense of like, oh, you've got bags. Okay, Set is probably like 30 and he looks like he's 70. Okay? Like, because that's how they draw them. But it's like... You, you can tell, like, we've got cute little baby faces. We're drawn young. We're supposed to look like... What are we, like... We're in the Magical Academy, 17 to 20. Like, we're not that old. Okay? We're the young... We're the young kids. She looks, like, roughly our age. He looks like he's probably... Th and having the businesses he does, I'm sure, like, back in ye olde days, you know, it was like, I went to school at 12, and then I was a multimillionaire running a business at 18 because... Nobody, people died at 30. You know, you were the village elder at that point. You know, and if you lived that long, Jesus. You know, but like, but like, there's always something about characters where you're like, okay, they, they have the air about them that like, okay, even though, yes, whether you're 20 or 30, anywhere in between, they always draw the characters the same. They've given us all slightly younger than Ryle looks. So like, okay, but he just doesn't seem like he's only a few years older than us. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's because he's got his shit together. So I just assume that he's not like 22. No offense if you're 22 and you got your shit together, because that's impressive. Because let's be real, most people in their 30s don't have their shit together. Nobody ever really has their shit together. You're just faking it, okay? Like, there's a, like the amount of people that have their shit together is very small. But like, in this world, we're still all fumbling around figuring things out and whatever, and he's got his shit together. So he just seems like he's older than us, and yet... His wife is like a teenage girl. I, I, okay. All right. Okay. I just. All right. This is curious. All right. Still don't know if I want to knock the bitch off the boat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. We'd have to. I don't have a lot of magic, so he wouldn't hate me too much. It'd be okay. Anyway. If Alan, who's a prince, has never met her before, she really must be the apple of his eye. No wonder I don't recognize her face, despite her being a noble. Yeah, but I swear... Well, I, I maybe we just assume she was sick? Because she never shows up at parties or whatever? Even married, I heard that Marquis Werder had only brought his partner to social gatherings a few times in the past decade. In the past decade? How old is she supposed to be? She looks like 17 like us. How old are we? Like, I feel like if we told us we were 17 to 20, I'd believe it. But she does not look that much older than us. A decade? I thought we were about the same age or she was slightly older. Right? Okay, I'm not crazy. If they've been married for a decade, I feel like she may be way older than me. If she's gone mad with magic, us normal people are no magic, magic against her. And that's why I've brought you two. 
What do you mean by that? I have no magic to fight against her. I wonder what Silva wants us to do. Does he want me to call out to her to stop attacking? Maybe it's like the dramas in my past life where the cop says, Freeze! Do not resist! Oh, but Lilian is demanding to see Marky Ryle. I don't think there's anything I can do. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? If you want to beat magic, you need to bring magic. I have before me a prince who can use water magic. Why not use it? I have no obligation to do as you say. Why do you think I brought her with us? In order to get the prince to use his magic. Huh? Silva suddenly grabs me from behind. He holds me in a chokehold and I'm unable to move. So, see? This would have been a great CG. I know it's Alan's route, but like, Silva just knifed to my throat, holding me from Like, that's not going to turn me off, game. I can feel something cold and hard against the side of my head. Oh, well, it's a gun. Oh, oh my god. Oh, hell yeah, we are getting a CG of it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and they split it so that we got a CG. So it technically counts as an Alan CG, but I'm just saying. I'm sorry, but like, you can't be like, oh, Silva's got his arm around my throat and he's going to threaten me. And like, that's not going to be good for me. Like, sir, you don't have to try that hard, but I appreciate it. Now I'm confused because Alan pinned me down to a sofa and now freaking Silva's got a gun to my head. Like, I. Listen, normally I wouldn't be in, like, the love interest with a gun to my head and be like, the fuck? But, like, it's Silva, so it's totally fine. Whatever he does is okay. He can get away with anything. And Katarina, you bastard! I is this a gun? I know I was just imagining a cop drama, but now it really feels like I'm in one. The scene has moved to. Do you care about what happens to her life? To a do you care what happens to her life situation? Look at how beautifully sexy he looks with that little smirk on his face. The civilians are important, right? And besides, I'm pretty sharp. Prince Allen, she's an important woman to you, isn't she? Huh? What? I'm serious. There's a bullet in here. It's up to you. Whether this is going to end as a threat or not, Your Majesty. Isn't this pretty bad? Silva, who could be a secret character from the fan disc, is holding a gun to my head. Could this be one of the doom ends from the fan disc? I don't want it to end here. I can feel myself going pale. Let go of Katarina. Sure, I'll let her go, if you do as I say. If you're such a smart prince, you know what to do, right? What is it you could do to protect the woman who's so dear to you? Helen grits his teeth and clenches his fist, and then... You mustn't, Prince Alan! I am the one that must comply! Release Prince Alan and Lady Katarina! Yeah, seriously, she looks our age, and you're trying to tell me she's like ten years older than us? Liliana stops her magic, and the water that's surrounding her begins to disappear. Now's our chance! Capture her! Tie her up so she can't use her magic anymore! No, Liliana! At this rate, Liliana may share the same fate as Ryle. We've come to save them, but because I'm captured, both Alan and Liliana can't resist. I've got to do something. This is the only thing I can do. I don't remember him mentioning that his wife has magic or whatever. Like, in Keith's route. But maybe they did and they were like, don't you love your wife? And doesn't she have magic? And like, I brace myself. Then they take a hold of Silva's arm and bite down hard. Ouch! Captain? The moment I bite him, Silva's grip loosens. They're like, ooh, he tastes good. <laughs> I duck down and slip out of his hold. Then I run toward Liliana while everyone's focused on Silva. Lady Liliana, let's run! Uh, okay. Okay, I mean, I suppose she does look slightly older than us, but not by much. Not enough to have been married to that man for ten years, Jesus. And Katarina, you... I grab Liliana's hand and jump out of the room. Alan follows closely behind. Not to be like she's pushing 30, because, like, if they got married when they were, like, 17-ish, say, 18, she's, like, 27, 28 at least. Hey! hey they ran for it! 
After him! We run into the hallway, and Liliana and Alan quickly shut the door. Prince Alan, please stand back! Liliana uses her magic. A giant wall of water covers the door to keep it shut. What the? It won't open! What? There's no way! This will last for a little while. Let's make a run for it now! Got it! Alan looks like he's in pain. What happened? Oh, shit. Already in Chapter 5, Closing Distance. Oh, we did have two choices in Chapter 4. I'm like, we only had one choice in Chapter 4. No, that's true. I forgot the thank you one. We continue running to avoid the pirates, and then take refuge in an unoccupied room. We lock the doors to make sure it won't open from the outside. As soon as we catch our breath, Alan suddenly grabs my shoulders tightly. You idiot! Why did you do such a thing? Huh? What do you mean? You bit him. He had a gun. What would you have done when you were... If you, when you resisted, that guy shot you? Oh, right. Oh, sorry. It was, it was so instinctive. Also, Silva wouldn't have shot me. There are things you're allowed and not allowed to do instinctively. Why are you always so... Helen looks if, as if he's about to cry, and then... <gasps> are you gonna hug me? Oh, he is! Look at that adorable CG. He hugs me ever so tightly. I can feel him trembling as he holds me. Oh, it's so precious. Why do you always just charge without thinking? Well, um... God, seriously. Oh, my heart stopped for a second. He doesn't let go, but continues to scold me while embracing me. It makes me realize how much I worried him. Hug him back. He's right. After reflecting on my actions, it was impulsive and reckless. His anger is valid. Sorry, Prince Alan. I apologize immediately, and Alan shakes his head and hugs me even tighter. I'm just so glad you're okay. Oh, look at this sweet little face. Alan tightens his grip on my back, making sure that I'm still here. It's rare for me to be so close to Alan like this. At first, I feel bad, but as time progresses, I start to get antsy. His shoulder is pressing against my cheek feel the cool cloth, and it makes me realize that Alan was right there. Oh god, w what is this? I usually don't get touchy with Alan. I mean, we've danced together before. But it's so rare to have Alan hug me so tight to the point I can hear his heartbeat. Oh, um... Huh? I suddenly get self-conscious and shy. I don't know what to do with my hands, so they're hanging in the air awkwardly. As I start to look around me, my eyes meet with Liliana. I can see her eyes twinkling. She's like, young love! Uh, um, Prince Alan, uh, um, I think it's time to... Uh, oh, r right. Sorry. Aww. <laughs> she is all of us right now. Aww. Oh. No, Liliana, uh, I mean, Lady Werder, this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> Think of me as just the heir. It's amazing to see a young man's possessiveness. Wonderful. Yeah, she is as like, fucking like horny for romance and watching people get fucking romantic as fucking Sophia Jesus. No, it's not like that. Besides, she's... Liliana's words make Alan's face turn bright red. That in turn makes me feel awkward. It's not like that! Be quiet. I feel... I want to say be quiet, not it's not like that, but... It's not like that! Probably the right answer. I want to say be quiet, though. Ah, yeah, be quiet! Good. Oh, it's just, I'm not us saying her to be quiet. Us is just being quiet. I wanted to be like, be quiet. I thought we were saying that. <sighs> oh, that's true. That's true, because if you're like, it's not like that, then he'd be like, ugh, crushed. So not saying anything is like... I'm like, is it like that? Maybe. What, what do I do? I, I can't come up, with, come up with any words. 
She clearly has the wrong idea. I wish I could say something, but the more I panic, the harder it is to speak. While I'm panicking, I can hear Alan let out a grunt. Uh. My, my. Isn't it nice to be so young? I'll be covering my eyes, so please continue. Liliana covers both her eyes, but I can totally see both her eyes wide open from between her fingers. I'm gonna close it. Yeah, she was peeping at us through the fucking closet, the pervert. Come to think of it, when we met Liliana for the first time, she saw us in a weird situation. Oh, we're flashing back to that CG. Fuck yes. God, I love it. Oh no, it left too fast. Ah! Just remembering it causes my cheeks to burn even more. Wait, back then I just felt like his face was too close. Come to think of it, he'd be pinned down on that couch, huh? Just now I realize that the imagery was exactly how an event scene would look like in an, in an Atome game, right? <laughs> I can't look Alan in the face! Alan's also at a loss for words and stands there frozen. We both look down, unable to look at one another. Then I hear someone coughing. <laughs> anyway, I'll end the joking there. We clearly can't stay like this. Y you have a point there. So, where were you two up to up to until now? Oh, what? Wait. Where or what? Where were you two up until now? Oh, okay. Which, okay, never mind. I read that weird. Oh, well, when we were locked up in a room, I was with my brother Jordo and a few of our friends. We were discussing our next move with everyone. And that's when Silva called for Katarina and me. He told us to cooperate with him. Hi, so I was the one who involved you two. I apologize, Prince Alan, Lady Katarina. Please don't worry. More than that, you're not with Marquis Werder, Li Lady Liliana. Yes, Marquis Ryle. He, he was taken to another room. Yeah, well, your husband's a bastard. I hate to say that. Liliana's shoulders start to quiver. There are tears in her eyes. I do love how much she loves her husband, though. I can't blame her, because he's hot. He's got glasses, and he's a little bit of a nerd. But he is kind of an asshole. No matter how much I ask, they refuse to let me see him. So I couldn't help it. Oh, uh, so that's why you used your magic to resist. Right. Uh, Marky Ryle, please stay safe. Please, stay safe. I like how she calls him Marquis Ryle and not just Ryle. Am I gonna have to call Alan King Alan every single time? Like, that's gonna make it weird. I'm just saying. Liliana grips her hands tight and starts to pray. I can tell how much she feels for Ryle. Especially because she saw what condition he was in earlier. If your beloved is injured, how could you stay calm? That's why she used her water magic to try to take the pirate. To make the pirates reunite her with him. I like how she's just like... If you see the person you love like that, how could you stay calm? And it's like, it's somewhere in the back of her mind. Tick, 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 just waiting. Just waiting for her to go. That's why Alan was so freaked out about the pirate almost hurting me. Like, sh she'll get there. Wait, Liliana never denied being called Lady Werder by Alan. But I still haven't checked, have I? Um, Lady Liliana, I'd like to make sure, but if you're Lady Werder, does that mean your husband is Marquis Werder? Yes. Technically, that's the case. I'm Marquis Ryle's wife, Liliana Werder. Then, the person you followed here is Marquis Werder. Yes, I've come after Lord Ryle and snuck onto the ship. But why would you go through all that? Couldn't you have just asked the Marquis? That was possible. I would have done so already. So circumstances prevented you from it? He obviously wouldn't want his wife on the ship when he knew that like, he was going to sell everyone on it. Prince Alan, Lady Liliana is the apple of his eye. Marquis Ryle has been hiding her like a precious jewel. He must have been worried other men would approach her. That's why he never brought her, right? I tell Alan what I heard from Mary, and Liliana's expression darkens. Apple of his eye? Is that the public perception of me? In actuality, it's not that romantic of a story. I'm not the apple of his eye, but merely just a troublemaker to him. Interesting. A troublemaker? What do you mean? Because it's weird, because, like, oh, we had that impression, and, like, we weren't, we didn't know, but, like, also, when we were in Heath's route, and we were like, what about your wife? He was like, oh, 
You know what I mean? He wasn't like, yeah, fuck that bitch. He actually seemed like, oh, fuck yeah, my wife. You know what I mean? Like, he was so mad about people with magic, but, like, his wife was what brought him back. Like, to be like, oh, fuck yeah, I feel guilty because, like, I do love my wife. That's the impression you got, you know? So maybe he's just, like, he's probably resentful of her magic, but he doesn't mean he doesn't love her. I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out. Both Alan and I cock our heads in confusion as Liliana gives a painful smile. You see... Our marriage was a political maneuver. What? I don't know how to respond to that. Liliana just sadly smiles. But I've always been in love with Lord Ryle. That's why I was excited to marry him. But that was not the case for him. In order to become head of the family, they wouldn't settle for anyone but me marrying him. Hence the arranged marriage. Wouldn't settle? <laughs> I don't understand what she's saying, so I look over at Alan, and he too seems confused and shakes his head. You don't bite the headset. I was in the middle of reading, and nobody wants to hear you biting the headset and making loud noises. You've been a jerk. I still didn't mind it. I had faith that once we married, we'd be able to bond. However, Lord Ryle refused to take me to any social gatherings. Maybe Lord Ryle already had feelings towards someone, and perhaps he's been meeting her in secret. What? No. It won't be like the romance novels, right? It does happen quite often among nobles. They have an arranged marriage, despite the individuals not having feelings for one another. Listen, you either want me to pet you, or you don't. Fucking pick a lane bird. Because you're like, pet me, and then you're like, don't pet me, and then you bite me, and then you want me to pet you, and then you bite me. Like, I'm like a fucking cat. Don't you bite my headset. You can read that, right? Yeah. Well, I guess... I do hear that a lot, but <laughs> Alan's over here like, I fucking get that. I heard that there aren't much of those marriages anymore, but I guess it was true that it still exists among nobles. You're engaged to Jordo and you're not in love with him. Despite it being a political marriage, I didn't mind. I was happy to be Lord L to be by Lord Ryle's side. However, he has been concealing his feelings. So if my marriage is the reason for Lord Ryle's unhappiness, I can't accept that. I'm afraid of the truth, even though I want to know how he feels about me. I pretended to never notice. And I guess it's time to pay the price. He's finally approached me with a divorce. What? Yeah, what? Wow. A divorce. But this is also my fault. I've suppressed my feelings for Lord Ryle all this time. I guess I had it coming. I did brace myself that such a day would come. If a divorce is what he wants, so be it. I'm going to accept it, but there was one thing I can't get over. And what was that? He never told me the reason why he wants a divorce. Liliana grips her skirt. They were allowed to get divorces in this time period? Well, I mean, whatever. This is like a fantasy game, but it's like, whoa. Huh. If he had told me he was in love with someone else, I would have backed down for his happiness. I was even fine with a lie. Should he have lied to me and asked for a divorce, I would have accepted. I considered myself to be in his way. Although sad, I was able to accept it. However, he looked as if he was suffering when he brought up the divorce. How could I not comply after seeing him like that? I'm wondering, because I feel, again, I maybe I'm just misremembering, but I thought, like, in Keats, he really seemed like he actually loved his wife. You know, but maybe he feels like he's not worthy of her because, like, he doesn't have magic. I can't remember if he said that specifically. But I'm wondering if... He's like, yeah, let's get divorced because I'm not good enough for you. And then he's like, because she's been concealing her feelings. You know, because she's like, oh, he doesn't seem interested in me. So I'm just going to not tell him that I adore him. And I'm just going to be quiet and pretend to be a good wife. And he's like, I'm obviously making her miserable. And it's just lack of communication between two parties. But, you know, it was a political marriage. So he's like, she was forced to marry me and I'm just trash because I have no magic. She's got amazing magic, and why would she fucking love me? And she's over there like, he clearly didn't want to be married to me, and they're both fucking actually in love with each other. Aww. I know he was going to sell us all off, but like, you know, we can forgive him and let him have his happy ending, right? Because the pirates saved nabbed us. It's fine. Anyway. So, because I let it be all this time, I wanted to be honest with my feelings just this once. I understand where you're coming from. But why be so reckless as to sneak onto the ship? Well, that was because Lord Ryle just handed me the separation papers and then set out to sea on the vinculum. 
Yeah, he's like, let's get divorced so you don't get dragged into my mess. I assumed you went on the vinculum to avoid talking with me, so I decided to sneak on. Girl. I see. I didn't know. She mentioned that she came after her loved one, so I assumed it was either a one-sided love or someone she was stalking. Well, I mean, it's not really a one-sided love if they're both in love with each other, but the other person doesn't know. Who would have thought she'd bring up divorce and a political marriage? This is bigger than I anticipated, so I'm at a loss for words. What can I say? To see her like this, Liliana must really love Ryle. And seeing him the way he was must worry her even more. It makes sense. If I knew that Keith or Maria or any one of my friends were hurt, I'd find a way to get help to them. Liliana, I now understand where you're coming from. Let's go look for Lord Ryle together. Lady Katarina! Well, I'd also like to go and save the Marquis with you, but... As long as those guys are lurking on the ship, we can hide. But there's no escaping them. Oh. He's right. Rather, we could even be caught just being here. And besides, I have no idea where Ryle is. Lady Lil Liliana, would you happen to know where Marquis Ryle is detained? I haven't the slightest idea. The ship is very big and has many rooms. It would be very challenging to look inside each one. And I'm sure the pirates would catch us before that. Hmm. Then we could try going back to our original room and ask the others to help. You saw how there's a guard there. That means we'll probably just get caught. Right. Then it's impossible to find Ryle. What do we do? I don't really know much about this ship. See, this would have been a good plot line to have, you know, with Nickel, because we could be like, use your wind magic to find him. Can't you hear things? But then that would, like, we'd be able to find him faster, and then they'd have to try to drag that plot out. So, eh, maybe that's not good. Liliana's body quivers. Alan puts his hand on his forehead briefly as he thinks. Then he sighs and looks up. And then that means we should go to the bridge and call for help with the transmitter. An emergency transmitter? I didn't know such a thing as ex existed! Yeah, we were told before we boarded that the Department of Magic developed this magic device. Well, I'm sure a pirate's stationed there too. I mean, it's quite possible that the pirates took control over the area. He has a point. It's highly possible. Then that means it would be dangerous to go there as well. So basically, it's hard to look for the marquee... To look for the marquee Werder. To look for marquee Werder on the ship. And trying to call for help is risky. This is looking hopeless. Well, they will need to get more supplies at some point. It's dangerous, but if they're gonna resupply at the port, that'll be our opportunity to get a hold of Sorcier. Oh, if we're able to hide from the pirates until the ship stops, we have a chance to save everyone. Well, that's my train of thought. But there are, con there are concerns. The ship uses wind magic to sail. And that means we won't need fuel. I'm sure they have enough food and medicine to last a while. Even if the voyage is short, the ship is very well supplied. And now that the pirates have stopped, supplies aren't being used. And now that the parties... Sorry, not the pirates. As the, I'm like, why would the pirates have stopped? Now that the parties have stopped, supplies aren't being used. Aww. But we've set out on a new path, not listed on the itinerary. It's possible we may need to stop somewhere. Get his devious little grin. And, actually... Alan's about to say something, but he shakes his head. Did you think of something? Kind of, but it's not an option. I know! Water, huh? Water? How did you know? I use water magic. I understand what you're thinking. So, what's going on? I tilt my head slightly, clearly not able to keep up with them. I couldn't stop the water line. I could stop the water line on the vinculum. Stop the water line? You idiot, it's a device that makes water for the ship. Oh, that device. Yeah, but that would be bad. Alan's quick to notice what I didn't understand. What happens when you stop the water line? Water on a ship is very precious, so we should leave only a few days worth of water, then throw the rest away. Without the water line, they can't get water, and unless it rains, their supply is cut, and they'd have no choice but to resupply. Oh... Will that be okay? If we have water magic, we can use the water in the air to create water. The royal family aren't allowed to use magic, so I figured I shouldn't be the one to suggest this, but... 
Oh, well, you happen to have another person who excels in water magic standing before you. Oh, and Mary also has water magic. Well, considering their magical strength, if we have both of them, we should be okay. Got it. Yeah, but there's probably other water magic users and they may, you know. We decide on what to do, but... Did you find them? Uh, damn it, where are they hiding? They're looking for us. Very happy, huh? Yeah, it's probably best we don't move. Yes, we should wait and put our plan into action at night. For now, we try and be quiet and rest in this room. I sit next to Alan on the sofa and let out a sigh. But as I sigh, my stomach growls. Aw, hungry. Hungry again. I can't help it. I was running around and it's way past lunchtime. I eat breakfast after waking up, but it isn't enough. I've already digested it. Well, you have a point there. Um, but it's not like we have anything to eat in this room and we can't step out. Alan looks around to see if there's anything. Liliana shoves her hand in her pocket and offers up us a little box. Well then, Prince Alan, Lady Katerina, please eat this. And this is... Oh, this wrapping paper. Is it the chocolate from Le... Le Rev? Le Reve? Le Reve? Yes, exactly! Why did you have that in your pocket? I wasn't invited to this event, so I've come prepared. I know this isn't much, but please take it. <laughs> I wasn't invited, so I put chocolate in my pocket and thought that was good enough. You've come prepared. Thank you so much! I open it immediately and pop it into my mouth. It's just as good as I thought it would. Mmm, delicious. Prince Alan, take some for yourself. Sh sure. The three of us eat the chocolate to fill our stomachs. Ow, bird. When I was a child, I loved chocolates from Le Rev. Or Le Rev, Le Rev, whatever. I'm happy to be able to eat it again. I'm glad you like it. It feels nostalgic, huh? Alan's eyes narrow happily as he takes a bite of the chocolate. Oh, a memory scenario. God damn it. A treat. Okay. It was like getting to the point where I was like, okay, we'll just do this little scene and then it'll end, but now we got a memory scenario, so it's gonna be a long part again. You. I sat before the piano, alone in the palace's music room. After my competition with Katarina, I realized what I excelled at. Since then, I've put a lot of effort into my music. The more I practiced, the more I improved. It was fun, and honestly... It's nice seeing the surprise on Jordo's face each time. I continued to practice. Eventually, some people even began to call me a musical prodigy. I really didn't think it was that big of a deal, but my teacher thought I was good enough for a recital. I've had many since. I was honored to be acknowledged by so many, but it also made me so busy I barely had time to drop by the Clay's estate. Before, I would go there all the time to compete with Katarina. Thinking back on those days, I felt a little... Actually, really lonely. But it was also an opportunity. I decided to throw myself wholeheartedly into music. I spent my days thinking that way. Prince Alan! A voice called out to me as I walked to the music room. I don't know who's calling me. I'm assuming it's me. At first, I thought I was imagining it. But then I heard light footsteps. Before me was Katarina. Oh, good! I was looking for you! Katarina... What are you doing here? <laughs> Surprise! Here, I brought you. I brought this for you. Katarina handed me a little ribboned box with the words "Reeve" stitched on it. It was the name of a chocolatier. I faintly recalled that Reeve was rather popular among noble women. Why for me? Because you're working hard. What do you mean? Prince Jordo told me that you're working really hard on your piano studies. So I wanted to give you something. See, you... I never expected this from her. A warm feeling welled up inside. I accepted the box of chocolates, but as I took it, I felt a sudden chill. It came from beyond, behind Katarina. As expected, there stood my twin brother. <laughs> I'm like, could have been Mar it could have been Mary, but... Hey, Katarina, you shouldn't run off like that. If you've finished, let's return. Oh, sure. Best of luck with the piano, Prince Alan. She waved at me with unrestrained energy as Jordo dragged her away. 
I saw them off and then popped one of the chocolates into my mouth. The sweet taste spread through my tired body. This is good. Stop it, bird. Normally I wasn't one for sweets, but it would have been rude to refuse a gift. For some reason, that day's chocolate was wonderful. Maybe I was more exhausted than I realized. A few hours later, after finishing practice, I glanced at the Larive box again, again as Jordo entered the room. Though there was a smile upon his face, his aura said otherwise. I turned to make a break for the door, but Jordo caught me. Ow, bird, I'm going to throw you downstairs. Do you want me to pet you or not? You want petties, but then you're biting very hard. You're being a bad bird. She's being very mean. She's very mean, bird. You're getting feisty. It appears you've finished practice. Well done. And now, that appears to be the gift Katarina gave you. Is it a snack? Um, yeah. They're chocolates from La Rive. Chocolates? And knowing Katarina, she must have asked someone like Mary about the current trends. All that for you. He continued to smile, but his pressure was overwhelming. Right, because he's sadistic. I couldn't let this get any worse. A cold sweat ran down my neck as I tried desperately to change topics. So, why was Katarina visiting anyways? I figured she was here to see her fiancé, but the topic change only seemed to make him angrier. Well, Katarina had been asking why you stopped visiting. Again and again. I informed her you were focused upon your musical studies, but she must have been worried you were overexerting yourself. I figured she would calm down if she saw you, so I invited her here. Gordo glances at the box of La Rive once more and smiles. Katarina's has never brought him chocolates. Who could have thought she would ignore her own fiancé and bring only you a gift? This isn't good. I knew from experience being around him in the state wasn't the best idea. W well, I have to get back to practice. I rushed off, hiding Katarina's chocolates in my pocket to get them out of sight. I see... But she didn't get any for Jordo. Jordo said she ignored him. And that meant she came all the way to the palace for me. And realizing that, I'm not sure why, but it made me feel happy. This is my memory of Larive. Being it here with Liliana inside the vinculum makes me a bit nostalgic. I could never forget that taste. It's something I cherish. Her kindness to me. I didn't realize at the time, but even then... I'm sure I liked her. That's why her feelings made me happy, and why it was so delicious. Because I really am a dunce, not noticing all this time. To think of it, Barry said the same thing once, when she said something about how it was best I didn't notice. Now that I have, I get what she meant. I want to smack myself for not realizing sooner. Reeve chocolates. Thanks to Katarina's chocolates, I was able to delve deeper than ever into my studies that day. Because she reassured and cheered me on, I was able to muster up my strength as well. Though holding Jordo's ire wasn't exactly pleasant, even that's a fond memory. I'm sure the taste is just as it was then, but these will never compare to those. The memories drift through me as I pop a chocolate into my mouth. Aww. Alan's eyes narrow happily as he takes a bite of the chocolate. Seeing Alan eat the chocolate so happily reminds me of my childhood. Hush, in the game, Alan's a cho is a is a cocky prince, but in actuality, he isn't like that at all. That's because you changed him. I love it. I love the fact that the game versions of them are totally different than the ones she knows. And she's like, well, in the game, he's like this, but he's not really like that at all. And it's like, he would have been, but you changed everything. I love it. He surprisingly can he surprisingly can act like a child sometimes. If I said that out loud, I know Keith would totally say, So do you, sister. As I'm staring at Alan while eating my chocolate, he suddenly looks at me. He lets out a sigh and points his finger at his cheek. And Katarina, you have some powdered sugar here. What? I touch the area Alan points to and find some powdered sugar on my fingers. Bird simmer the fuck down. <laughs> my lady Katarina, please use my handkerchief. Liliana takes her handkerchief from her pocket and wipes my cheeks and fingers. As she's taking care of me, another handkerchief falls to her feet. It must have fallen out when she took the first one out. She has two handkerchiefs? She must be well prepared if she has two handkerchiefs. That seems sus. I take a closer look at the handkerchief on the floor. It looks very well cared for, although it does appear quite old. 
Thank you, Lady Liliana. It seems like you've dropped that handkerchief. Oh! Liliana gasps and rushes over to pick up the handkerchief on the floor. That seems... Are we supposed... Is that supposed to be sus? Because it seems a little sus. She holds on to it dearly and then places it back into her pockets. Unless it's like a, an heirloom or something. What was that? I... I'm borrowing this handkerchief. Liliana gives me a melancholic smile. From her gaze alone, I can tell that it means a lot to her. Okay, so maybe it's not suspicious. But maybe it is. I don't know. It appears all of the powdered sugar has been taken off. I've had enough chocolate, so please, both of you, finish it for me. Liliana, still holding the handkerchief that she used to wipe my cheek, gets up looking a little sad. She goes to the corner of the room and stands in front of the window. Maybe it was Ryle's handkerchief. Her profile exudes sorrow. If that handkerchief means so much to her, it must belong to Ryle, right? And that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering what it can mean for her. And suddenly I get hit on the head by something next to me. Ow! Why'd you do that, Prince Alan? How old are you now? You should really be more aware of what's around your mouth when you eat. It doesn't happen that often. I usually eat quite proper. Then why do I always see your face covered in crumbs? Mary and Sophia are always cleaning up your face. Well, look at him. Look at the little grannies. Like, they're always cleaning you up. You're such a mess. But he loves it. I'm a hot mess and you love it. He may have a point, but... I have no further comment. Alan sighs as he looks at me. He just wants to lick the chocolate off the corner of my fucking mouth and he knows it. You're of age now. You can't act like a kid forever. Alan isn't one to talk. He's immature for his age, too. Especially when it comes to romance. Alan is aloof when it comes to people's feelings. I believe we're similar in that regard, so it doesn't sit right with me that I'm the one treated like a child. I think I'm more mature than you, Prince Alan. Are you serious? I don't get covered in food when I eat. I don't pick up food off the ground, nor do I ever get sick from overeating. Not like I'm always having stomach aches or anything. What kind of person does he think I am? That was a lot to say to a grown woman like me. I've been holding back on climbing trees, so I do feel like I've become more ladylike. For the record, no ordinary noble child would climb trees. How did you know what I was thinking? I've known you for too long. As we're going back and forth, Liliana turns to us and just giggles. <laughs> you two sure are close. N no, it's not like that. We've been childhood friends. Oh, I heard that it was Lady Katerina who had drawn out the musical talents of the young Prince Alan. What? Oh, no, no. I didn't do such a grand gesture. Prince Alan just worked very hard. And he's blood. He's like, Ugh. <laughs> Oh, Lady Katerina, you're such a wonderful lady. Right, Prince Alan? Wh why are you asking me? No matter what happens, I will be sure to protect you two. Prince Alan, please don't lose. Hmm. What does she mean? I have no idea what she's talking about. Liliana just smiles softly at me. She's like, don't lose her to your brother. Lady Katarina, please cherish this precious relationship you two have. Seeing the two of you, I know. You two do not hold anything back. That's a very strong bond to have. If only I had this much interaction with Lord Ryle when we were children. But our fates have changed. Oh. Lord Ryle, please... Be safe. Liliana prays with all her might. I can see how worried she is just by her expression. Just hope we can safely find Ryle. Such thoughts in mind, we wait patiently through the night. Okay. I'm like, I know we're going over, but like, it's just because we had that little like, oh, now we're Alan. We're going to have to remember that when we come back the next part. Oh, well, I'll, my, I'll see the purple. But anyway, I will see you next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.